you know, time of the King for Kim Folk, their heart. The last, uh, I think it was 32 balls he scored. I think it was 76 or 78 runs off those 32 balls. What was it about, I guess, the field settings and what you were seeing the options available that allowed you to manipulate the field in the way that you did to like, score so efficiently in that sequence? Um, yeah, I guess it basically comes down to if you're in on, on these wickets, you, you can do some damage. Um, I think these wickets are flat enough to uh, give yourself options with any field uh, bowler sets. Um, and then it's a matter of exec executing under pressure for that bowler. Um, if he doesn't, as a batsman, you have to make him pay. And if he does, then fair play, you have to take what you can get. Um, a few squirts here and there. So I guess today, um, Kina didn't execute uh, in, on some particular vital deliveries and we managed to capitalize on those. Um, but I also think we, we made quite good plays in those last four overs to sort of manipulate that field um, with ramp sweep shots, ramp shots, uh, myself and Williams getting some boundaries in that, in that fashion. Stephen Bard hasn't been in the lineup for every game. He was out outside the open accommodation uh, early in the tournament, but he comes here today. He scored the bad century, and there was, a, I think, an eight ball sequence in the fourth through the sixth over where he scored five boundaries and was really trying to roll well. What have you seen in training sessions, I guess, leading up to today that showed to you and to the team that he was ready to make a contribution like he did today? Yeah, I think he's he's found his feet in the tournament now. Um, it was unfortunate that he he couldn't start sort of the, the tour very well, um, just having fallen short of a bit of form. Um, but I think he's found his feet very nicely. We know he's a he's a gun opener. He's um, he's an opener by trade, um, and you can't. Yeah, I, I guess you can't buy that uh, at a shop. So um, yeah, he, I, he's doing that job of setting the base for us very nicely and. Uh, today he scored at a good click as well, um, so that really set up our power play very nicely and um, allowed JP Kota and, and, and myself coming in the 10th and 12th over um, to to just uh, build an innings as well. You saw Zane Green get promoted up above you today to keep that right hand, left hand disruption uh, going in the middle for a car kick. How much emphasis do you as a team leadership team and everything put on prioritizing having a left-right combination where possible to throw off the ball in rhythm even if it means bumping yourself down the order yeah i mean obviously it's a, it's a team game so we we look at the permutations of um how we can unsettle the bowling attack um obviously with with the lopsided boundaries here, one being very short and one being very far, it's, uh, the left and right hand combination is, is something that you can use. Um, but then again, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's still a ball coming at a bat and whether you hit it right to left, uh, it's still got to go somewhere. Uh, and some guys play play well on the offside. So we'll see tomorrow if we do that again. Um, I, I think uh, it's, it's, it's always best for the team at that given moment. And in T T20 cricket, sometimes you need to make calls. Um, sometimes they, they come off, sometimes they won't. Um, but I mean, it, it's also something that we have in the team. We have uh, Jan Fralink, we have JP Kutzer, and we have Zane Green that are left-handers, and the other four in the top seven are right-handers. So it's very nice um, balance to have. Um, and it's something we can use a against any attack, also against um, um, different types of bowlers. So with a Zane Green li likes a spinner or a seamer, we can um, have everyone paired it up, and I think it, it brings a dangerous dimension to our betting lineup. Bernard Schultz, with the forward, he said he was leading with the taker in Ireland four years ago, different conditions, and yet he's still incredibly efficient. What is it about him and the experience he brings that from your perspective allows him to succeed regardless <coughs> of the conditions that are on offer? Yeah, Bernard has been, he's a silent guy, and he's also with his bowling a silent assassin in that sense. So. He brings lots of control to that middle overs. Um, he brings a calm head um, and, and, and really good skills. Um, and, and yet again, he's, he's done well today with four wickets. Um, so, bowling to the short boundary, it could have been him that was man of the match today. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very nice for him to, to also have some rhythm now going to the tournament um, in a lighter part. Do you think so? Uh, what's the story behind the bowling? Um, 
I don't know really, it's just about doing your job. <laughs> we started doing our job only in the third game um, and that's it. Um, I guess our, our first game we, we got we got Berlin out by a good attack on the day. Um, on, on the second day, uh, a, a good partnership. So both of those two games, I think something or someone took it away from us. A good bowling partnership and a good batting partnership. That's the nature of T20 cricket. You can't always defend defend it. You can do it with all your might, but it might not might not happen for you on the day. Um, and then I guess the last three days we've been very disciplined and um, yeah, our, our batting has fired. Uh, and uh, I, th I think we're in a good space now, carrying good momentum into uh, the more vital part of the tournament. You were playing in front of TV cameras. Uh, was there any talk at all about wanting to make a statement? Uh, it's always a privilege and, and nice to play as an associate nation. You know, it doesn't come off, uh, come around that often. Um, a, a, a odd live stream or two maybe here and there, um, but it's just not the same. So it's, it's a big privilege to do that. Um, we've had some practice, if you can call it, in South African competitions in the Africa Cup. So, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. It, the, the hard work you put in um, days like these make it make it worthwhile and may, um, it could change your career if you do if you do well in a game like this. Um, but as I say, the focus is on the next few games. It's on tomorrow night um, and yeah, getting that win uh, and then bigger things than TV cricket could happen for us. There was a moment after the toss uh, when Ian Bishop spoke, had a really long conversation with one of your bowlers. Was that Fraley? Yeah. Do you, can you tell me right what that was? It was Jan Fraley, yes. Yeah, what was said? Uh, I'm not sure. Conversation about him, right I'm not sure. It's probably about bowling bounces since it was Bish, but <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't hear that. Um, but obviously, if you, uh, the man of Bish's caliber, you can only gain some experience from him. So, um, Obviously, Jan used the moment, uh, I guess, to to talk and rub off from him. Um, and he's bowling well now. He's executing his skills as Jan Schwelling. So, yeah, hopefully it worked. Nothing else I've done on the TV broadcast was where you put yourself. And I know it's something I've seen from you in, in Florida and previous events, where early you had to run out in the second over. But then as the chase moves along, you put yourself on the boundary and take the positions. Why, as a captain, do you feel, I guess, the imperative to put yourself, especially in, in catching positions on the boundary, as opposed to keeping yourself in the ring where it might be slightly easier to manage uh, situations from a captaincy point of view? Yeah, um, I guess it's about getting the right fields in the right places. We've all the teams identify a few guys that stand in uh, what they call hot spots, so where the ball goes most. Um, I like a, a, a sort of a catching hot spot. Um, another guy who's a bit quicker than me um, needs to field on the boundaries with the ball. Come, don't come in the air that often, but on the ground. So I guess it's just about where you, where you feel the ball's going to go next. Um, it's about making making a call between midwicket or cover or uh, cow corner or long on or whatever. We've got a few guys that we've identified to stand in those places. And if that means that I have to stand on the boundary, I think I have a loud enough voice and a good enough pres presence to still keep the control for the ring fielders and as captain. Uh, 